I've tried the settings of every pro controller play. Hundreds of different variations, linear, exponential, boost, no boost, every single combination that you can think of. And these are the settings that I now swear by. Before I show them, all I ask is that you subscribe. Okay, so from the top, we got control auto and I don't like it. Build immediately, gotta have that on. Edit hold time doesn't matter as long as you have a bind that's set just to be edit. If your edit bind is switch mode and edit, that's terrible. You absolutely do not want that. You need two separate buttons for that. So like mine, I have edit actually on a paddle and then switch mode on R3. So that means I don't have to hold the edit, so that doesn't matter. Slide hold time, I like like right around a 0.125. The two camera settings, I don't know anyone that even changes these. The default is pitch and 0.1, and I don't think I've ever seen a good controller player use something different than these. Kind of a useless setting in my opinion. And to finish out the input section, vibrations are off. The buzz of the controller can slightly throw off your thumbstick, which obviously in turn will mess up your aim and stuff, so you gotta have that off. Both of my build multiplier and my edit multiplier keep those at the exact same thing. 2.0. So my build sense is exactly double my look sense because it's multiplying my look sense, which is 43%, both horizontal and vertical. And I like to use a little boost on the look sense of 2% turning boost on both horizontal and vertical. Nothing on the boost ramp time though. And I don't have the instant boost thing on. All the sensitivities you see right here are probably like 85% of Fortnite. For me, this combination of look and then build and edit multiplier, it has been great for my piece control. I don't have the craziest fast edits, but when I need to make an edit, when someone takes my wall, I have one shot to make an edit. I would say I make that edit 90% of the time, and that's where it really counts. You need to be consistent. You need to be able to rely on your builds, edits, and piece control. And then for this look sense, obviously the movement is great on this look sense. Rotating around with the hammer, looking around. I never feel like I'm too slow or too fast from that aspect, but it's also great for hip Shots. I don't think that everyone realizes that this is the sensitivity that controls your aim when you're not ADSing. And unless you're playing a whole lot of no builds, most of your fights end up being fairly close range. Whether you get in a build fight, a box fight, most of your shots are going to be taken from a hip fire and not ADS. And that aim is controlled by your look sense. So all around the look sense is great, but in those few situations where you do need to ADS, maybe you need to fry someone out of the sky or they're trying to run on a hammer, I really like a 7% on horizontal, 9% on vertical. And then I also use a super slight boost, just a 1% turning boost on both of those. And again, no ramp boost. 7% horizontal is for tracking people from left to right. And it's slightly slower because people usually move horizontally a bit slower than they move vertically. Like with the hammer, people shoot straight up super quick. With launch pads, with the soaring sprints, and even just jumping in general, you need a slightly faster vertical to make sure you can get up to their head quick enough. But with this ADS sense, I never have trouble. I can shoot people that are soaring through there with hammers. I can get tags on people that are super far away. I can absolutely fry people with ARs from medium range. It just works. Like, there's nothing else to say. It works. Then look damning time. I don't mess with that stuff. Zero second. Look input curve is on the superior one, linear. I do not have fun when I play on super stiff exponential settings, so linear is the move. And my dead zones for my custom cinch gaming controller is 10% on both left and right sticks. So you could just go open your game and start playing on these settings. But, you know, maybe I'm lying about these settings being good. Maybe I'm actually trying to get tens of thousands of people to use bad settings. So, when I play Fortnite and maybe fight some of you, it makes you worse. If you want to make sure that's not true, then stick around and watch me win some games. That was scary. Not exactly what I meant to do, but it still worked out because these settings come in clutch. This is such an awkward fight. Match, 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 match. Dude, come on. Thank you. I actually saw a pretty funny comment the other day. On one of my settings videos, someone said, when I try Fortnite settings I saw from YouTube, after a few hours of playing on them, I'm not that good. <laughs> like, let this be a reminder that settings are not just a magical cure to make you good at Fortnite. You still have to have a decent skill level to be able to utilize the settings. What they help with is basically maximizing your skill potential. So whatever your skill level is, you know that with proper settings, you are as good as you can possibly be. Oh, wait. Depending on your skill level, bad settings can make you worse at the game, and good settings can make you better at the game. Is this the first time I get to test like long range ADS? Hey, look at that.
What a shot. That was a literal blank shot. What a final shot. Let's go. So accurate. That's what I'm saying. You hit so many shots. We are not ADS. Super clutch shots like that. 10 elims and almost 30% accuracy. If you've watched one of my previous best settings videos within the last like four months, you've probably seen me show off these exact settings and you might be getting sick of it. But I continue to show them off because I haven't changed my settings in four months. So whatever settings I use are the ones that I show off. If I don't change them, then I still show the same ones off. Because every time I upload this video, I get a help new player. Oh, I dropped my shotgun. Really, the most important controller setting of all isn't actually even in the settings tab. But what it is, is just not changing your setting. The most powerful controller setting of all is literally just not changing your setting. I'm not gonna lie, I am haunting this dude. I want this kill so bad. But I know that people like to change their settings literally weekly. The thing is, every single time that you put on controller settings, you start to know the exact thumbstick path for a certain edit, how far you need to move your thumbstick to adjust your aim. It all becomes like second nature because of how often you do it. So that's your muscle memory that you're building. But every single time that you change your setting, you basically set your muscle memory back to zero and you have to develop all that again. That's stuff that literally takes months to develop. So it's really not something that you just want to reset to zero like that. I'm being so annoying to this dude, but I don't care. I'm getting this kill. Aw, <laughs> uh, he probably just killed my guy. He got me. He stuck me. Hey, men miss. Dude, this game is so scuffed. I just can't kill anyone. Extra max. If you happen to try these settings and you don't like them, I would say you should slightly tune them, but don't go too far in either direction. Too far in either direction will take it to the extreme. And you do not want to be extreme. I think he clicked the wrong trigger. Oh man, that's gotta feel bad. Two easy wins in a row, five elims that game, not as many, but still some super solid kills. So great setting, subscribe and check out some of my other videos, and thank you so much for watching.